Well done, Austin. <laughs> well done. A good and faithful servant right there. Coach, what, just, what were your thoughts as you... Well, I had to take the napkin right off there because I, I didn't bring a hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I said I need something on that one. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing story. It's one that, um, you know, it is, I, and I do mean that sincerely, uh, college coaches are, are tremendous with all their, their teams. And uh, he, uh, a lot of coaches would have done exactly what we did. And uh, it, was, it was really to, to my staff and I and to the university, it was like this was a no-brainer. And so you, you just you do it and it's the right thing. And, and the benefits have been incredible ever since then because this guy is a great talk about a, a purpose in life. I mean, it's, it's incredible about giving us that opportunity. And now he has this opportunity. So it all sort of fit together. Coach, when you have a player around your team who's been through such adversity and overcome it yeah. uh, and then has such character and integrity, how does that impact the rest of the players? Oh, they, they see it every day. And, and we, would, we reminded them as well all the time. Uh, it was always uh, with our players that were so talented, you know, and they were, they were, we were having some success. And then uh, the, that sense of appreciation is one of our big core values. And the appreciation they have, when you look at Austin, and this, this young man, when I, 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 when I decided to give him a scholarship, I went to see him play. He was a sophomore. I forget the numbers, but, and if I blow him up a little bit, Austin, it's okay. But I think he, was, he played a really good team, and he had like 28 points, 16 rebounds, uh, you know, 10 assists. I said, this is the next Wally Serbiak, who was a tremendous player, they had very similar games. And then uh, uh, to see him you know, not be able to walk. So. We heard from Austin what he learned from you. What did you learn from him? I, I think resilience, the, the way you just, uh, uh, because we got, got to know, I never got to know his mom, got to know his dad real well and his stepmother. And uh, just, the, that's the way they were too. Their faith was so strong, oh my goodness. And so, um, and his grandparents as well. Their faith was, everybody was so grounded in their faith. And that the, uh, his, the resilience of accepting God's will was, was just, it was, it was just written all over his, his face every single day. So, um, it, he, he thinks that we gave him the gift. He gave us all the gift. I mean, he really did. Coach, obviously John Wooden is one of the greatest yeah. coaches, if not the greatest of all time. What does it mean to you to win an award named oh. after him? You know, that was, uh, here I am, 22 years old, and I'm a high school teacher and uh, coach. That's all I wanted to do is teach and coach. And um, that was the first clinics I went to uh, was, was Coach Wooden was speaking at him, and I just sat there in awe and just wrote down everything that he, that he said, and it was incredible. And then I had, the, I, had the, I had the occasion that Mike Ganzi is here and Patrick is here, my son. We went out to UCLA and played. Uh, then when we were at West Virginia and he sat in the corner of the uh, and signed every autograph there was a line waiting for him and we were fortunate enough to play a, a great game because of those two guys and uh, and a few others on our team and and I got the message coach wouldn't like would like to see you after the game it was like <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make me wait in line he's but it was just incredible but is exactly what we're talking about right here he was he was so humble and, you, and obviously his team had lost, but it, it was, it, I, I could just see that humility why he was so successful and he, he had so many good things to say about these guys. Coach, you showed me earlier up, uh, upstairs a book, a Bible My book. with verses. I know it's a little personal, but no, this you, is, you seem to be a guy that's... We'll share that. No, that it's, it's, a, it's about my sixth or seventh one because you can see they get beat up a little bit. <laughs> but it's written by a Jesuit priest in 1953, the year I was born. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a rock. It's a rock. And, and uh, I, have a, I have a little card in here that I told you about that, that uh, this was, uh, we, had lost to, uh, we had lost to Northwestern on a 94-foot pass. We were a bubble team, Jimmy, yeah. and, and it was like, you need every win you can get, and they win on a 94-foot pass uh, with one second to go in the game, and the guy lays it in. And we're playing Nebraska at Nebraska the next day, and the place is packed, and, and I, I get this, I had this card that this, this, this man gave me, and so I just, I end up reading the card that basically says, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. Um, I praise you, I adore you, I thank you, I thank you for everything, and I trust you. Mm. And for some reason, 
I just highlighted that. That day on, three, on March 7, it was March 2017. And uh, the next thing we know, we beat Nebraska. We were, I just said, I'm just going to put 100% trust in the Lord. Just, that's, that's where I'm going the rest of my life. Well, we won by about 30 that day. And then four days later, our plane crashed trying to take off from the airport in uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan. I mean, it, it never, it, it didn't crash, it never got up. But it was, if anybody followed the reports about, uh, it's so ironic because, and Austin was not on that plane, thank God. <laughs> and because uh, we told him to stay back and study and we'll bring him later. So God, God was helping us there. And uh, we survived that. We won four games. And our, our record since that day is, is like 70 wins and 16 losses. Hmm. We won the Big Ten tournament. We went to Sweet 16. We went to the National Championship game. We went to Sweet 16. And, and ho hopefully I continue to do that because God's will is everything to everybody, as we all know. Following God's will and trusting it. Because we know it's important to you to develop your students or your players as men and not just players. How do you do that, though, on a daily basis? I, th I think that uh, you, 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 have a, you have a combination of, my mother used to say, you value, your values, um, they're, they're, they're not necessarily always taught, they're caught in how you present yourself every day. You know, when, we're, when, we're, when we know we have a certain amount of time to practice and we, there's rules about how much you practice, practice ends at that moment. That integrity, if you're always living this life of integrity, um, that it just sort of, it abounds with all your, your team and they understand that. And, you know, you don't know, I, I think as coaches, we don't know a lot of times when they say, why are you winning or why did you win that game? You don't really, you usually can figure out why you lose, but you don't know as much about why you win. And I think that's another thing that you're trying to figure out all the time, you know, how to, how to make your teams better. Um, but it's not about X's and O's, it's about those relationships. And that's something when we started, Val Jordan's here and, we started putting in these core values back in you know, about 10 years ago and just living them and teaching them and then acting them out every single day. Uh, what a difference it made in our team of teaching these core values that are so important to us. Coach, last question. Uh, young, young coaches here right now or even older coaches, if you could say, if I could go back over my career and do one thing differently, what, what would it be? Oh, I got some former players here. They probably would give you about 20 things <laughs> I could do differently. Why didn't you ever put pitch knock on the pick and roll? You know what I mean? Pick and pop. That's a good question. Uh, Why didn't you, by the way? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no I, I, think, I think what I would tell young coaches is that you're never, your team is never, uh, one thing you have to know, your team is after a good win, your team's never as good as they probably, you, you'd probably like to think they were. And that's a small thing. But when, you're, when you go in that locker room after a loss, your team's never as bad as you might think they were. And be so careful that at that time, you lead them right there. You show them direction out. You, you, you do not, you just hold yourself with great honor and say, well, watch the film and we'll get better. A growth mindset of setting uh, for young coaches. Just continue to grow and get your team to understand this is a process. I'm gonna keep growing, right? And, and, and embracing adversity and, and just embrace every bit of it because all of a sudden it, it just it comes around and you just become this 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 great example of of embracing you know God's will is really what it's all about coach this is the first time I've met you I've watched you on the sidelines obviously and you look like a hard stern coach <laughs> and but you like to have a lot of fun with your players behind the scene talk about the importance of doing that as a coach with yeah, water I, guns too. I, yeah, <laughs> I, with water guns. Yeah, it's the only place that would ever happen. And that, that was Kathleen's. My, I, you know, and I, I, I wouldn't be up here without my wife Kathleen and my, my four children. And uh, they've been so supportive through it all. But that was her idea. To, to you know what we, I've been. That's why they, I get to get you get drenched with water once you start winning <laughs> big games. And that's why I've been through a few books. Uh, and and so. Uh, that was just an idea that she came up with, and we went in there, and, and they weren't prepared. They weren't prepared for that. But there's got to be those light moments, and you got to create them. And, uh, you, you know, the, the, it's all part of the relationship building with your, your teams. You have to build relationships uh, with your team in order to, to make it all work. And it's a struggle every time because you're always thinking about, here it is right here. Yeah, well, that's going in. <laughs> that's what one book was done right there. 
<laughs> but it, it's a uh, it, it's it building rela- It's part of building relationships. They got to know. <laughs> this, it, it, I feel cold right now looking at that. <laughs> that it, it's all, it's all part of that thing to try to, to build your relationships so that they'll they'll run through walls for you if they really know you care about them. And and that's 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 one of the big secrets is uh, you know there, there's a there's a great book by Gagne. He said, "Lead for God's sake." It's, I don't know if any of you ever read that, read that, but it's incredible about building relationships. And we try to do it, and then you get back to, oh, the next play, the next thing. And then you've got to realize they're not doing anything if you don't have a relationship. So you've got to keep building that. Coach, if you'd put Pitts, Pitts and Oglin some pick and pops, you'd have had that scene a few more times in your career. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's give a huge round of applause and appreciation for Thank our 19th Peace Life Award I'm... winner, John Beeline. Coach, you're excellent. You're excellent.